Great. Uh, welcome to this video with Asto Eater again. Third one. This time we've got some uh, right rigged up some radiators, so it's ready to roll. I just spent last half hour bleeding them up. So the heater at 14 degrees. Radiator's at 14 degrees. And that one is as well. So we've got a bit of reflective foil on back at radiators. Help keep some of that heat in this garage. So whilst we've been priming radiators and using this function, circulate pump, then we'll bast our software which as you can hear basically activates pump. And you can do other functions with it as well. A few more gurgles of some air coming out there. But we'll stop that. Just run fuel pump for for a few minutes. Well, about 20 seconds should do it. That's running at 5 hertz, which is turning on and off five, five times a second. So we've got my fuel supply outside. 20 litre drum with diesel with breather and exhaust runs outside as well so because I've had all that off the fuel system needs priming on otherwise when it comes to combustion it'll stop and I can hear it note that it comes to change slightly so uh, that means it's primed up so we'll stop that exit it and we'll knock the system on so this is going to be on a thermostat, but it looks pretty these wires for the moment. So it's firing up. So the system's running. Preheating up fuel. Blow plug, and off we go. itself down because once it gets hot enough we don't need glow plug on to sustain burning. So the hotter it gets, the faster fuel pump will run. Then it'll run at a maximum of five times five injections of fuel a second. That's five hertz. So at the moment it's running at two hertz. Now providing your supply voltage it doesn't drop below 10.4 volts, it should be okay. I'm running this one off a 30 amp power supply unit which is destined for a 3D printer but in the garage it's going to work pretty well it's designed to be switched on at all times so I may as well take advantage of that and run the Webasto system off it not only that I'm going to run the audio system in the garage as well I'm going to spend a lot of time here so I'll use it so I'll start to get nice and twisted Yeah, it's getting toasty. So, just point at it 
claws so you can see claws 20 degrees the idea is to get it nice and warm so hopefully that will be up to a maximum of about 75 degrees check over the radiator which will take a bit longer to get warmer so it's further away from the system but it's starting to get some less water circulating around it's still 17 at that side same again at that side so we'll just keep an eye on that not by stand to get a bit toastier at bottom The heater, we're back, we're back the heater is running at full tilt now. And all, all this has been plumbed in using readily available things from Screwfix. So you've got HEP2O fittings, your elbows, your TRD valves, a couple of quid each. So I can put a thermostatic relay valve on there if I want. But because the system's going to be regulated by thermostats on wall, I'm just using caps on it instead. No leaks on system. It's good, but because prior to boarding all off, tested all system and made sure there were no leaks on it after all. So the last thing you want is to do this sort of work and then have to rip the ball back out again because you've got a pissing leak. So temperature inside the Basto heater itself is now at 51 degrees. A little run around that for about 10 minutes or so until it's fully warm and there's a cool up level inside that's now up to 28. Exhaust temperature, that's quite a bit of gear on that. Yeah, you're going to burn your hand if you put it on. Nicely. The radiators are from Wix, you know, 33 quid each. If you've got your 10% trade discount, bring it down a little bit, which is always a, always a bonus. Nobody likes paying for the price for oaks. Likewise, at screw fix, if you've got an electric fix or a plumb fix account, that brings the price down considerably. Now, you might have seen these holes in the wall. What they're for? They're going to be for LED panel lights up either. So they're uh, fit to be fit to 24 watt LED panels, four of them at each side. When I'm doing machine polishing on my car and heavy detailing over the winter, I'll be able to see what's going on. And likewise, I've got a set of them going up in ceiling as well. So, the whole system's running fine. Which I'm quite happy about. Uh, probably you know, a bit more camera work in places, but you know, trying to film this thing on an iPhone whilst doing a bit of a description and trying to monitor it and make sure it's all working. It can be a bit of a burning heart sometimes. But it is all working well. Great, if anybody has any questions, um, let me know. Um, somebody asked about the K line adapter, which I'm using. This was designed for BMW, uh, really 1999 to 2004 cars with the OBD2 connector. And you can pick one up either about 10 or 15 quid. Um, it's exactly the same as the Fagcom one, except inside it's got a couple of terminals bridged. So you've got your K line on pin 7, uh, your ground on 16, I believe, and your positive supplies on a different pin. To make it work, you only need three wires. Really simple system, really good. And um, we'll ask for the software is available off their website for downloading. You don't need out it's expensive, and this bass to cost me 45 quid off eBay. The seller said it won't work him, plugged it in, cleared all the faults, and it was fine. What had happened is it had locked itself out due to an excessive number of faults in the system. Um, plug it into the software, cleared all them faults, tested it, made sure our PCB were fine, bump up fine, 
blow up plug were okay, that, that measured a correct resistance. And then fuel pump were fine as well. So there was no reason, apart from low voltage, which is the fault that were logged in it, why it wasn't working properly. So the car it came out of had a defective alternator or defective battery. Um, no reason at all. So, great bit of kit. And it's heating it through thoroughly. So all the air's been bled out too because it's heating it top and bottom. And this side's starting to get a bit warmer as well. It'll take a bit longer to warm up, but it's further away from the heater. It's only a little pump on it, remember. But it's starting to get there now. So the bottom of it is 16, top of it is 32. So as you're aware, basic physics at school, thermodynamics, hot water. Blows around system and this is the highest point. Those hot thing rise, hot air, hot water. So the temperature now is 52 on the Wabasta. So if I set my thermostat at for 21 degrees, it'll run the radio system constantly until the thermostat trips out or until the temperature inside the Wabasta exceeds 79 degrees. Now, if it exceeds 79 degrees, it'll drop into a fault condition, turn itself off until the temperature is below uh, the set parameters in, in, in the Wabasta. Not quite sure what their parameters are. So yeah, that's it really. Um, thanks for watching. Any questions, um, stick them in YouTube and I'll try and answer them as best as I can. Thank you.